the one truth, the scripture, and the word that was written by the Holy Spirit and thus given on to ourselves. For if not, how do we know what we have heard is truth? For there is truly only one teacher, and that is of Christ Jesus. For are we not brothers and sisters in Christ? For shall we believe any other teacher besides the Lord Jesus? Shall we take anything thrown at us, not bring it to the living word written by the Holy Spirit, and take it for face value? Or do we bring it to the Holy Spirit by Christ Jesus, pray upon it, seek truth? For these are questions we need be asking ourselves and amidst times of deceit. For there are many a things that are taking place, and we can't say off our own understandings, for we are called not to do such in the first place, but to follow our trust in the Lord. For He shall direct our paths in acknowledging Him in all our ways. For we must put aside our egos. We must put aside all of our personal interests, especially when it pertains to the things of this world. For our Lord Christ Jesus said to us, We cannot serve money in God. For whom shall we serve? And amidst a broken, fallen world that we are in, Brothers and sisters, I cannot help but to say, a fallen world it is indeed. False doctrines, false teachings, false perception, money being the rapid source for anything, whether it be at the church, whether it be at the stores, whether it be in meeting with one another, I mean, today's society, we feel as if we have to have money to take somebody on a date. We feel as if we have to have money to take care of one another. We feel as if money is a bare necessity into fulfilling our callings, our purposes. Do we not remember? We were crafted by our divine creator that he breathed the very breath of life, our spirits, unto us, into us. That by his Son, Christ Jesus, we have been saved, but not by works, by faith in he. But by faith in he, with his Holy Spirit, we are called to be convicted, called to be moved, and called to make a difference in this ever broken, deceitful, foreign land we find ourselves within. Now with this being said, there is only one, and that is of the triune, the holy triune, the Father, the Son, Christ Jesus, and thus thy Holy Spirit. And our Lord Christ Jesus said this, walking amongst this earth, and it's not only pertaining to the disciples that were with him, but to all of his disciples, all of his brothers and sisters, all of his family as they are, as we are made his body. Our Lord Christ Jesus states these very things. In John chapter 15, verse 9, on through wherever the Holy Spirit takes us, our Lord Christ Jesus states, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments... You will abide in my love as I, our Lord Christ, has kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. So right there, we must abide in the love, the everlasting love of our Lord Christ Jesus 
and all that he has done for us and continues to do, that we may be moved, that he may be the sole focus of all things. God trumps money. God trumps doctrine, especially false doctrine. God trumps piddling around to decide what's needed to be done on a day-to-day basis. For if we are not praying, if we are not seeking His Holy Word and Holy Spirit, then what we all are doing is running rampant on our own understanding. For when He says, He, I, the Lord Christ, has kept our Father, my Father's commandments, and abide in His love, He's saying He followed all the commandments. First, love God. Love God above all else. You know the commandments, or at least we should as the children. Get down to the fourth. It states, honor his Sabbath day. Honor his Sabbath day, for it shall be a covenant amongst God and his children. A seal amongst us and he. For the Sabbath is not what the world perceives it to be. For we may be Protestant, we may be claimed to be Catholic, we may be claimed to be any denomination, for that does not matter when it comes to the Word of God. We are brothers and sisters in He, in Christ Jesus. But there has been a mass deception in this world, and it has to be spoken against. Sunday is not the Sabbath. Sunday is is a law put in by the Catholic Church, by the papacy. Now, I'm not against people in the Catholic Church, but I am against false doctrine. For our Lord Christ Jesus says, it is not right to follow man or money, for you cannot serve that and the Lord. For Solomon in his Proverbs, for we must trust in the Lord with all our hearts and not lean on our own understandings, which is man-made doctrine, which is man-made anything. It's opinion. It's perspective that does not come if it does not come from the Word of God, by the Holy Spirit of God, thus taught and of the divine essence of God. Then there is something wrong. For therefore, It cannot be discerned upon truth. It cannot be labeled as truth. It cannot be labeled as God. And I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, but we are amidst a broken world full of false doctrine, full of false teachings. God tells us to keep his Sabbath day whole as a day of rest, for he thus rested as an example to us, his children, to rest with him, to take Hold to dive deeper into his scripture, to dive deeper into prayer, to commune with the Father on that day of rest, to have that day of rest, to be acknowledged as his and his solely. But today we look around all of America and the many parts of the world, and we all worship on this sun day, this first day of the week. We all worship on whatever given day we want. I've heard preachings in person about, oh, I can choose my Sabbath, I can choose what day I rest with the Lord. Okay, okay, you might be able to choose when to rest, but you cannot change the day of the Sabbath that the Lord hath declared. And that is Saturday. Sabbath day is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. These are the days, my family, that we are called to rest and worship God. Although we live a life of worship and worship Him every day, we cannot worship Him off false doctrine. We cannot worship Him without praying, connecting, communing. We cannot worship Him without diving into His holy word. Thus Christ continues on in verse 11, saying, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that Your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. 
for you are my friends, he says, if you do whatever I command you. In these times we live in, no matter where it be that you are, we are still the body of Christ. We are still called to make a changing difference by the Holy Spirit's convictions, by the moving of the love for the Lord. We shall be moved. We shall make changes in ourselves. We shall present the truth and present the changes forthcoming to our brethren and sister and even to those who know not Christ Jesus that they may find him in his gospels. But this is what we're called to do. As the Lord hath said, we are called as his joy be in us to be joyful people. As to be joyful people. It is hard to see joy in a broken world. It is hard to see joy in falseness, in deceit, in everybody running around like a rat race living for themselves. For joy is hard to be found. That's why he says, my joy, may my joy be found in thee. For he is our joy, he is our strength, he is our refuge. For false teachings, for false worship, for living for money, these are not things of the 21st, the 20th, the 19th, the 18th, the 17th centuries. These date all the way back to pre-Christ and during the time Christ walked this earth. These are things that have felled us as mankind for as long as mankind can be foretold. May we turn from our wickedness, seek the Lord with all of our hearts, and be changed, transformed in our hearts, renewed in our minds, and show that love of God, love of the Lord, and present His joy, present His peace, present His truths to those in need, to pick up our crosses and help others who have fallen pick up theirs and march on together. For the salvation is claimed by Christ. For we are called to walk with one another and present these truths and to present love and sacrifice our time, our efforts, anything we can think of that is needed as the Holy Spirit thus guides to bring forth change in the body of Christ. For this is truth. For this is written in the Holy Word. For this is what need be placed on all our hearts for growth, for love, for peace, for joy. For how can we have any fruits of the Spirit if we don't console the Spirit? For how can we have any love for Christ Jesus if we don't talk to him? We don't have a relationship with Him. For how could we know we were created by a divine being if we don't even acknowledge Him as the truth in heavenly places beyond this broken world that is a catastrophe? For Christ also stated, For He, <laughs> for He gives us peace. For peace Back at chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. <laughs> Down to 30. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. He talks about the true vine of the Father, of the Son. 
of us as the branches of God, of Christ Jesus. For we must bear fruit. I pray that we all find peace. I pray that we all turn to love God above all else. I pray that we honor the commandments with revelation of the true Sabbaths, the true Sabbath of Saturday, of Friday sundown, Saturday sundown. I pray that we be moved in the spirit to make a difference in this broken world. I pray that we seek Christ, the Father, and His Holy Spirit above all else. And I pray we be changed and also contribute to the change to bring our fellow members back or build them up. And may we be strong in the presentation of truth and may we be strong in the living the life we are called to live and to do the things that we have been called to do. Children of God, turn to your Creator. Seek Him in all things and you shall not be disappointed. God bless.